Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 57. Today is our lesson number 57 and we are on page number 261. Let's turn to it. Page number 261 and yesterday we did problem number 6 from part A through part E. Today we'll do the last part, problem number 6, F. I'm going to leave it alone by itself for a reason and we'll see it in, in, in this video. Here's what's given to us. X squared minus X plus 1 is equal to 0. And our job is to find the solutions to this problem. That's what it says. It says solve the given equation for X. Find the solutions. Solutions, that is two of them. It's, it's a quadratic equation. It's going to have two solutions. Let's see what we can do. Well, I shouldn't say it's going to have two solutions. In most cases, it has two solutions. Do you understand? Sometimes the one solution, uh, the two of them are for the same. For example, here, x minus 1 whole squared is a quadratic equation. It only has one solution, x equals 1. But that's, a, that's an exception. Okay, so what we can do? What, what, is, what is it that we can do here? Well, let's, let's, because it's a quadratic equation, because it's a quadratic equation, we have three tools at our disposal. So sit carefully. We have three tools at our disposal. So we can either solve this thing by what is known as factorizing, or we can use the straightforward quadratic formula. which seems like the simplest way to go. Or the third solution is to solve this equation here by, by a method what is known as completing, completing the square. Let's try factorizing it, shall we? So we're looking for two numbers such that their product is negative one. We're looking for two numbers such that their product such that their product is negative 1. Two numbers such that their product is negative 1. And also the same two numbers have to be such that their sum also has to be negative 1. Their sum must also be negative 1. But the problem here is this. The problem here is this. Because their product has to be negative 1, the only way we can get the product of two numbers to be negative is when one is positive and the other one is negative. They cannot both be negative because negative times negative would be positive. They cannot both be positive it's for the same reason. So if the product is negative one, one of them has to be positive one, the other one has to be negative one. But if that's the case, then we find out that the positive one plus a negative one does not equal negative one. It equals zero. It cannot be factorized. Factorization in this case would not work factorization method would not work here. What does it tell us? It tells us when the factorization does not work, what does it tell you? It tells us that whatever the solutions are to this quadratic equations, equation Roger, rather one equation, whatever the solutions are to this quadratic equation, the solutions are not going to be integers. They're not going to be whole numbers. They're going to be some weird quantities some fractions, maybe some radical, who knows. But they're not going to be whole numbers because had, had they been whole numbers, had the solutions been whole numbers, we would have been able to find the factors. No such thing exists here. We have only two choices, either use the quadratic formula or complete the square. Which one should we do first? Well, since quadratic formula is written first, let's do the quadratic formula because that's the most straightforward one. So let's use the quadratic formula and see what we find for the solution, shall we? Here we go. So x is going to be equal to negative b, and our b here is this, our b is negative 1. Did you write this thing here? This is our b, our a is positive 1. This is our a, this is our a, our b is negative 1, and our c is also negative 1. Our c is also negative 1. So let's do this, shall we? So we have 
minus p x is equal to quadratic formula goes something like this x is equal to negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a over 2a let's do it so x is going to be negative b negative b is negative 1 so it's going to be negative of negative 1 plus or minus b squared which is going to be negative 1 whole squared minus 4 times a which is positive 1 times c which is negative 1 are you with me whole thing over 2 times a which is positive 1 so let's solve, solve it here negative and negative is positive so it's just 1 plus or minus negative 1 squared is 1 and 4 times 4 times negative and negative is going to become positive so if this quantity is 4 plus 1 is going to be 5 5 over I don't know why the handwriting has to be so horrible so it's 1 plus or minus 5 over 2 there we go those are the two solutions those are the two solutions let's see if we can find the same solutions let's see if we can find the same solutions by using the method called completing the square on this side I'm going to write this simply as square root of 5 so that it doesn't hang out so much so that it doesn't stick out so much completing the square here's what we have x squared minus x minus 1 is equal to 0 I'm not going to explain too much I'm not going to explain too much because if you are confused at any point as to what, what is going on in this method called completing the square then watch the very last part of the yesterday's video you should do this anyway. You mustn't watch these videos out of order. You must go in the proper sequence because I assume that whatever we have learned before, you or you already know. But if you go all over the place, then it doesn't work that way. Yesterday, the second half of the video, if you are if you're confused, because I'm going to go a little bit faster, watch the second half of yesterday's video where we did the same exact method, where we used the same exact method to solve another quadratic equation. We used what is known as completing the square. So here's how it goes. So x squared is just x squared minus 2 times x because you see we want to write this as a squared minus 2ab plus b squared that's what we're shooting for so x squared minus 2 times x x is our a times b the b part has to be such that we undo whatever we did here it is not negative 2x it's just 1x negative x here so we have to undo by dividing by by multiplying this quantity by half plus plus half squared which is which is our b squared now I shouldn't have taken so much room I shouldn't have taken so much room because we are running out of room here and then we have a negative one so let's write it in a different color then we have this negative one we much introduced here and then we must undo what we have done here which is this quantity that we introduced positive one half squared we introduced this thing it's not there we must undo it by subtracting it positive one half squared is just one foot one quarter because I don't have room here I'm just gonna so this this thing is undoing this part negative one quarter will kill the positive one quarter you understand and now we have our square we have our complete square which is which is x right here which is our a minus you see x squared minus 2ab plus b squared so b squared that's this right here Voila. this whole thing up to here is this let's write this guy as this negative 1 let's write the negative 1 as 4 over 4 so that comes from here and then minus 1 quarter which is this guy right here because 4 over 4 is 1 you see so 4 quarters 
negative four quarters and a, and a negative one quarter, that's just five quarters. And the whole thing has to equal zero. So x minus one half squared minus five quarters is equal to zero. Let's bring the five quarters to this side. Let's bring the five quarters to this side. Again, because we don't have enough room, I'm just going to skip step here. Bring the five quarters to that side by adding five quarters to both sides. So we're just going to put an equal sign here and it becomes this. You with me? Now, when you take the square root sign of both sides, square, take the square root side of both sides, what happens is that, well, you see, I shouldn't have done that because when you take the square root side, it becomes positive and negative. It becomes positive and negative. Let me show you a quick example here. For example, for example, if x squared is equal to 9, when x squared is equal to 9, that implies that x must be positive or negative square root of 9, which is positive or negative 3. Because positive 3 squared is also 9, and negative 3 squared is also 9. So, let's take the square root to both sides. If you take the square root of both sides, we're going to have to introduce positive and negative. So, the square root of a square root of a something squared is just x minus half, which is why we took the square root sign so that you can get rid of this square sign here. So, x minus half it turns out is equal to positive or negative five quarters. Let's add half to both sides. If we add half to both sides here, I'm making a fuss. Let's bring the half to that side. This implies that x is equal to half plus or minus five, it should have been square root, square root of five quarters. Does it look familiar? Does this quantity look familiar? Well, this quantity right here, that's what this is. As you see, this can be written as, see this 2 is a common factor for both 1 and square root of 5. 2 is a common factor for both 1 and square root of 5. It can, it can be written as, like this also. There you go. Half plus or minus square root of 5 over 2. Oh, it should have been square root of, ah, when we take a square root, I made a mistake. When we take a square root of 5 over 4, 4 is a perfect square, which can be written as, so it becomes square root of 5, and because 4 is a perfect square, it can be written as 2, which is why we had a common factor of 2. There we go. That's it. So this, is, this method is called completing the square. This is a standard quadratic equation. There is a last part I want to do very quickly. I'm not sure if I really want to do it. Well, you can stop the video, watch, watching the video if you want to here, because the last part I'm going to do is actually quite unnecessary, but I'm going to do it anyway. I want to verify the solutions. I want to make sure that our solutions, our solution is correct. Let's do the shell. Verify the solution. Of course, in the real exam, we don't do any of this thing. We are here to learn. We are here to improve our math skill. We're not taking the exam right now, okay? Because typically they do not allow half an hour for you to solve one problem. Do you understand? So let's do it. We're going to verify our, our, our solutions. In order for us to verify our solution, we're dealing with square root of 5. We're dealing with square root of 5 here. We will have to know what square root of 5 is exactly. And of course, square root of 5, what exactly is, nobody knows. Nobody knows exactly what square root of 5 is because it's an irrational number. It's an irrational number. It goes on forever without any rhythm or rhyme or pattern. The digits go on forever. The decimal goes on forever. It has no pattern, no rhythm, no rhyme to it. It just goes on in a random order, and therefore nobody knows what exact value of square root of 5 is. It's an irrational number. So we approximate it. The question is, how much is it approximately? Because you see, when we, when we put it like this, answer to this question is, nobody knows. How much is exact square root of 5 exactly? The answer is, nobody knows. The answer is, who knows? Nobody knows. We can't ask that question. We can ask ourselves, what is it approximately? And you know what it is? I'm going to pick up speed a little bit. I'm going to pick up speed a little bit. Here's what it is. I want you to watch two videos. 
I want you to watch two videos. One is called T's Day 2 where it's going to say the title of the video is Know Your Squares. You must know your squares. You must know your squares by heart. There are some squares you must know by heart. 1 through 20 at least. Do you understand? And then as I said in the previous video, as I said yesterday, some other squares such as square of 25, square of 50, square of 100, square of 1000, these are basic things you should know by heart. You shouldn't have to reach for the calculator, nor should you have to think during the exam for two seconds as to what is the square of 25. You should know it by heart. Do you understand? So that's the first video. Don't worry about what it is. I pay absolutely no attention as to what it is. T is is the kind of is one one exam. What it is, what the exam is for. It's not your concern. It's one of the exams that I tutor for. It's called T's. You're not here for T's. You are here for GRE. But there, are, there is a series of videos on my channel called T's. There are 200 videos. Just type in the search for T's. T's Math Day 2. It will pop right up. Just type in T's Math. Just like you would type in GRE Math Day 3057. You would just type in T's Math Day 2. And you will see a video the title of the video is Know Your Squares. I want you to watch that video and learn the squares if you do not know. Here's the second one I want you to watch. T's, T's Math Day 3. The title of this video is How to Approximate How to Approximate Root 2, Root 3 and Root 5. Now, had we known this thing, we wouldn't spend so much time. We could have very easily verified our solution very quickly. So I want you to watch those two videos. Let's verify our solution here. Remember it is our solution is x is equal to half plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. Don't forget that. Okay? Let's erase all of this thing. Let's quickly talk about the squares. The square root of 2, the square root of 3 and the square root of 5 very quickly. The square root of 2 Square root of 2 has to know has to do with knowing what is the square of 14. 14 squared. Do you know how much that is? You should know this by heart. Square of 14 is 196 exactly. Where are we going with this thing? If the square of 14 is exactly 196, then it stands to reason that is that the square of 1.4 must be exactly 1.96. 1.96 in my book is approximately 2. Isn't it? Therefore, therefore, if you were to take the square square root of the whole thing, if you take the square root of this quantity, square root of this quantity, and square root of this quantity, it's, it's, it should it should work. What does it tell us? It tells us the square root of two is exactly one point two uh, is approximately. It implies the square root of two is approximately one point four. Do you understand? The square root of two is approximately one point four. Let's do the next one, square root of 3. The square root of 3 has to do with finding out square root of 300. Because that's what we're going to do. We're going to introduce, we're going to introduce a decimal here in a second. Square root of 300. How much is it, square root of 300? Again, you have to know your squares 1 through 20. And if we knew our squares 1 through 20, we would have known, we would have known, we don't, but we would have known. And we will know after having watched this video. Let's do 17 times 17. 17 times 17. 7 7 is a 49. 9 carry 4. 7 plus 4 is 11. Times, times 1 is just going to be 17. And it gives us 9, 8, 289. 289. So here is how the argument goes. Here is how the argument goes. 300 is approximately equal to 289. That's the argument. Do you understand? And square root of 289, we just found out, is 17. It's just 17. Therefore, 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 it stands to reason that square root of one, square root of 2.89 must be 1.7. And square root of 2.89, square root of 2.89 is same as approx is approximately same as square root of two, is square root of three hundred. Square root of the square root of two point eight nine is approximately equal to square root of three, and therefore the square root of three is approximately one point seven. 
Let's do very quickly the square root of 5. That's it, we are done with this part. As I said, I do not know why the hell I'm doing this thing. It has no, re no reason for it. I'm doing it because I felt like it. But then again, that goes for everything that we see here. Because nobody asked me to do this series. I'm not obligated to. I'm doing it because I want to. So, now we're looking for the square root of 5. Right? And for that, we have to understand what the square root of 500 is. And that comes from 22. We just have to do trial and error. Try 20 and you know 20 squared is 400 and then try 21 and you'll see that 21 is too small. 21 is too small. 21 times 21, 21 times 1 is 1, carry 2, 21 times 2 is 40, 42 plus 2 is 44. Now did I, did I confuse you? Did I lose you? You see we're not multiplying by 1 and a 2, I'm just doing it by 21 together. 21 times 1 is 21, 1, carry 2, and 21 times 2 is 42, 42 plus 2 is 44. Let's multiply 22 by 22. So we're not going to do two at a, one digit at a time. 22, 22 times 2 is 44. 4, carry 4. And 22 times 2 is 44 again. 44 plus 4 is going to be 48. So the, here, the argument is going to go that the square root of 500 is approximately equal to the square root of 484. Do you understand? And the square root of 484 the square root of 484, we just found out, is equal to 20, 22. Is equal to 22. We just found out. The square root of 484 is 22. If the square root, if we if we buy if we buy the argument that the square root of 500 is approximately equal to the square root of 484, then it must also stand to reason that the square root of 4.84, the square root of 5 rather, must be approximately equal to 4.84 which is 2.2. Hence, hence, the square root of 5, hence, the square root of 5 is approximately 2.2. Do you understand? Now let's verify our answer. And because it's, because it's an approximation, when we verify our answer, it's not going to be exact, obviously. It's going to be approximate. Let's see what we can do. So the first solution is this. The first solution is, we are claiming that x is equal to 1 half plus the square root of 5 over 2. We'll do plus and then we'll do negative. 1 half is just 1 half, that's just 0.5. And 2.2 over 2, because we are using 2.2 as the approximate value of square root of 5, 2.2 over 2 is just 1.1. Which means x is approximately equal to, it's not exactly equal to, it's approximately equal to 1.1 rather. x is approximately equal to 1.6. That's the first solution. Where is the equation? I, I we lost the equation. I need the equation to verify it. The equation was x squared minus x. x squared minus x minus 1 is equal to 0. X squared. Again, you have to know your squares. 1.6 squared. How much is 1.6 squared? You have to know what 16 squared is. 16 squared is 256, and therefore 1.6 squared is going to be 2.56. 2.56 minus 1.6 minus 1. As you can see, 1.6 and 1 is 2.6. So 2.56 minus 2.6 is indeed approximately 0. It checks out. It's not going to be exact. Let's look at the next one. And the next one is going to be minus. So now we have minus. And this is going to be equal to, x is going to be approximately equal to negative 0.6. Negative 0.6, that's the second solution. Let's do the second solution down here. So x squared minus x minus 1 is equal to 0. That's what, that's what the equation is. 0 0.6 squared, or 6 squared is 36. So 0.6 squared is going to be 0.36, and it's going to be positive because negative, negative times negative is positive because we are squaring it. So it's positive 0.36 minus 0 0.6 minus 1. 1, something has gone wrong here. Ah, I know what's gone wrong. That's why you have to pay attention. You see, it's minus x. It is minus x in the equation here, and x we are claiming is negative 0.06. So it should be negative, it should be negative, negative 
minus 1, which is why it wasn't working out. So watch what happens. Negative and negative is positive, so it's positive 0 0.6 minus 1. Positive 0 0.6 and, one, and negative 1 is negative 4. It's negative, negative 0 0.4, and here we have 0 0.36. 0 0.36 and a negative 4. Negative 0.4 is approximately equal to 0 0.36, and therefore this quantity is approximately 0. It checks out. It's verified. It is out of my system and I feel much better. But you should be able to do these kind of things in the exam in a few seconds. It shouldn't take too long. You should just realize it's 2.2 and just put it in the air and very quickly you can see 2.2. Uh, it comes out to be negative, it comes out to be whatever it was here, 1.6 squared is 2.56. It only takes a few seconds to do it out. Do you understand? That was it. Tomorrow we'll do the very last problem that you see on the page there, problem number seven, in tomorrow's video. Okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.